with Zafax. Hi there, I'm Chris from WizFX, and we work with radio stations and brands the world over on radio imaging, sound design, and music. And part of our process is often to share the technical insights and tips and tricks for using the tools that we all have at our disposal these days. But something that isn't often shared and talked about is the process and systems that we use before we even open the door, before we commit any audio to the workstation. And that's why I wanted to do this video series, to give you those insights. So thanks to Megatracks and my amazing lockdown here, let's go and see the cool intro. I want to put down compressors and EQs and multi-band compressors and flanges and phasers and vocoders and talk more about what imaging is meant to do, which is to resonate with an audience and help build brand and help um, your station ratings, right? Ultimately, uh, as a radio station, you want to have listeners that you can then sell your advertising on. So, um, and I, I don't think it's like talked about all that much why imaging has like a direct relationship to station ratings. We all know having the right personalities and music and clock structures can have a positive impact on your ratings. Obviously having any of those things wrong can have a negative effect on the ratings. But what often I find is the station imaging isn't talked about a lot in terms of how it impacts the ratings. And I think that's wrong because the consistency that it brings and the um, tone of voice that it brings is ultimately one of the most important things to your brand. It links all of the elements together and I think that it can often be glossed over that it has a major impact on station ratings and it's been cheapened. I think a lot of people have cheapened the importance of imaging. Just make me a sweeper. And I think there's more to it than that. There's a lot more depth that can be used and we can we can really analyze and create a determined purpose for every piece of imaging so that it best resonates with your audience and ultimately will be seen in an improvement in your station ratings. Fingers crossed. And as much as radio imaging has a positive impact on your station ratings, it can have a negative impact, right? Because if you poorly make, poorly schedule, poorly implement it, it's really going to put people off. I mean, if you're a jazz station and you're just shouting at people with massive stutters and crazy sound design, people aren't going to want to hang around for that, are they? That's going, to, that's going to annoy them. Or at least I think it would. It would annoy me. So it's really critical, right, to make sure that you land your branding right and you um, are building it in a way that is complementary to what you're trying to achieve with all the other elements on your station, the music, the presenters and the clock structures, etc. as we mentioned before. And that's why I like to think about radio imaging having positive and negative effects. Positive effects like acting as a sonic glue. No matter how many personalities and different show types and whatever else is going on on the station, your branding can become the sonic glue, the style, um, having only a, a limited selection of voiceovers as an example, to kind of tie all the elements together and, and make everything handshake and feel consistent across all of those different personality types. Because you might have a presenter that does a straight music show, it's that, that was, this is. And then you might have a personality show. So having consistent imaging can glue those two different styles of shows together and feel consistent. Radio imaging can elicit like direct emotional responses, hype, laughter, uh, excitement, drama, tragedy, whatever it is, you can use the radio imaging to really help set up a feel that you want to have at a certain time. So a competition needs to be, have a bit of tension, some excitement at the release and the, the, the winning moment, for example. You can do that all through clever use of imaging. Um, you might want to make the top of the hour really, really special and excitement and build it up so everybody's like, can't wait for that first song to come in. Uh, the, those are you know, some loose examples. Or maybe you've done a charity drive and you want people to feel something about um, a particular subject that your station or a particular cause that your station feels is important, you can treat that with reverence and, 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 and softness to generate an emotion of sympathy and get people's goodwill kicking in. So it is it's very powerful. Another aspect of radio imaging that's positive is 
momentum and music flow. And by that I mean you can use the imaging to keep the station feel like it's always moving forward, that there's always something coming up that's exciting, there's a next thing, a next thing. And it's not just CHR radio that can do that, all radio can do that. I think it's an important uh, fact of radio. We want to keep people listening as long as possible and we're battling so many other mediums that um, it's more important than ever and, and station imaging can help create that. Not only that, station imaging can help link songs together and make them feel seamless, even when they're not, right? Like you can go from a fast song into a slow song, and if you've got the right kind of sweeper that can kind of bring you down from that fast song into the slow song, that's going to help that music flow. You could even go so far as to brand every single song on the playlist with like a sort of sweeper on the front of it, just as a loose example, to kind of create that, that music flow. But imaging is key, right, in building that momentum and that music flow um, because a presenter can, can do a really clever crunch and roll over the end of one song and the beginning of another, but um, sometimes you just want a quick sweeper. And how you build that in and how you do that can have a real positive effect. And a final positive point on radio imaging is that it can reflect back the lifestyle, the attitudes and the beliefs of the listeners. And knowing those things, what their lifestyle beliefs and attitudes are, can help you to utilise the language that they use to best communicate with them and really sort of um, capitalise on that knowledge of them and how they speak and really draw them in and and you know if you're speaking to them the way they speak to each other, you just become another friend that they love. And that's what I was taught when I started out in radio, that it's personal experience. It's not mass media. You are broadcasting to one person. It doesn't matter how, through which medium, you're always just talking to one person. So talking to them like you're their friend, using their language, that's like key 101 to getting a direct connection and resonating with your audience. On the flip side, you do have some negatives for radio imaging. and These are things that you definitely want to avoid. One of them you can't, and that first one is selling. Like, especially if you're a commercial station, you have to sell. You have to have commercial messages. What I notice is a lot of stations just sort of shoehorn them into moments and don't actually think about where's the best place to put these so that um, the client's getting the benefit, the listeners are getting the benefit and I mean the clients getting the benefit because they're getting ears the listeners getting the benefit because it doesn't feel like it's intruding on their experience of your brand so just shoehorning it in anywhere isn't really giving it the critical thinking now I mean if you could avoid having um, sales messages and all imaging that would be beaut but we know that's not always possible so it's definitely worth thinking about a bit more than perhaps um, we have in the past if you're a station that doesn't require commercials, you're bloody lucky. And that just makes your connection to your audience more powerful by virtue that you're not ramming something down their throats. So it's definitely a negative and you have to, whilst it can't always be avoided, you've got to try to make it work in a clever way. Whether that's being creative with the scripting so it feels like it's always meant to be there or packaging it in a way that it still sounds really upbeat and exciting and fun and doesn't feel like um, here's this cool bit of imaging tacked on credit. Another negative of radio imaging is when it's created without respect to the playlist and by that I mean reflecting production values. We can all do stutters, we can all do crazy effects on the voice and all that kind of stuff but is that what is happening in the music that you're playing. I think long gone are the days where you just make your imaging sound hotter than your music. I think it's more than that now. I think you need to make your imaging feel like music and feel like it's part of the music that you're playing, not above and aggressive and beyond it. Because I think that's kind of, you know, that'll, that'll sort of be the next point we talk about, but it's kind of just shouting at me and I, I want it to feel like it's part of what I'm listening to because otherwise I'm just gonna go somewhere else. So analyzing, the production style and, and techniques of the music that you play is super important. If you're a station that doesn't play music, so you're, you're talk radio, then perhaps identify your key audience and then look at the music that they traditionally listen to and maybe lift some techniques from that because music's so powerful. Everybody loves music. So it's gonna help you to improve your station ratings by virtue of just connecting with them through the things that they love. Not doing that, it's a super negative, just doing whatever you want, not caring and not really thinking about that. For me, in my opinion, can 
start to erode your listeners' patience in your brand and they might just go away and there go your ratings. The final negative is sort of a trope of 90s imaging, I think, which is just shouting at people, win this thing now, do this now, we are this. Um, no one cares. You've got to talk to them like they're your mate, not shout at them and command them and commanding and shouting just it's just going to annoy them. It's a negative. Don't do it. So I'm always thinking about how can I say things in a nicer way, friendlier way, more like my listeners, because shouting at them turns them off. They go away. You lose your ratings, right? So I think it's important to really consider how you're delivering your messaging and just shouting. No, don't, don't do it. Um, that's a big no, no for me. Okay. I've rambled on ramble, ramble. I want to take everything we've just talked about and show you how I would apply that to some imaging so that you could do the same on elements on your own station. So we built a package late last year for KISS FM UK. It's KISS Nights package. KISS Nights is their flagship specialist DJ shows. It runs seven days a week in the evenings. They have loads of different DJs, right? We did different production, bespoke production for every DJ so that each DJ had its own flavor. But then we had a kind of sonic glue, there it is, um, throughout all of the production to link it together and make it feel like a wider kiss package. I want to play a montage of three pieces we made for one of those DJs, Sam Devine. She's a house DJ playing old and new school stuff. And when I play it back, I'm going to tick stuff off a list all up on screen in a second and you'll be able to see how I feel it's working, you know, in terms of positives and negatives. And hopefully at the end it'll only have positives. I mean, it probably will because I've staged the video, right? But at least you can see how you could apply this technique to the imaging on your station. Come on! Can you feel it? You hear me? Like I feel it? So let me really quickly explain what we've just listened to. We listened to a top of hour and two out of breaks in montage form, running through the positives and negatives. Sonic glue, 100%, like those three pieces felt very consistent. And although we're not listening to it today, you could listen to the full package here and you'd sort of hear that consistency throughout all of the production. That's the sonic glue. So that's definitely in existence there. Does it reflect the attitudes and beliefs and stuff? 100% because it's using language and excitement and stuff from the music and that culture. And that's what resonates with people that love that kind of music. It has momentum and music flow because it's, they're built like little pieces of music. They're built around music. And that's, you know, the top of our, for example, it builds up. And you could hear the sample of the, the singer, I suppose, talking about the, the, the beating of the drum, the pop of the snare, the bass, and all of those elements coming in. So it's got that momentum and it's building and, and it's exciting. And that's the emotional response also. There's that, that excitement and stuff that's there. So for me, it's all the positives and there's no negatives because it's not selling anything to anyone. It's not shouting at anybody. It's none of that kind of, you must listen now because this thing is happening. There's a reason why I'm not a voiceover. And not reflecting the production values of the playlist. You know, these pieces are reflecting the production values of the playlist, which will be more house music. So uh, that's definitely not an issue in these three pieces. Quick adjustment of the chair. So as I mentioned at the beginning, I want to get you to look at your radio imaging on your station and see if you can't apply the similar technique that we just did to the Kiss Nights Sam Divine package and try to identify ways that you can improve your radio imaging now. So think of Sonic Glue, think of reflecting your listeners' attitudes and beliefs and lifestyle and using their language, emotional response, think about that. Think about music flow and momentum. Try to avoid being too salesy, too commercial in these things. Try to uh, avoid the tropes of shouting at people and commanding them to do stuff. And try to avoid not using production values from the music that you play on your station, or if you're a talk station, that your core demograph, psychograph love to listen to when they're not listening to the debate and talk on your station. 
using that list will help you per piece, per package, however you want to do it, will help you to kind of identify weak points that you can look to improve over time. And ultimately, as you improve these things, your station ratings will start to creep up because you're taking things a lot more seriously. No, it's more than just music. It's more than just personalities. It's how you link these things together. It's more than just features. And, you know, it, it's how everything is glued together and has that consistency. And by using these checklists, hopefully you can identify the weak points on your station and try and improve them. Or if you feel you're doing a lot of the negative things and need to change that, then I hope I've given you a framework for the positive sides of radio imaging and how you might be able to structure it moving forward. So until the next video, I hope you found this useful. If you want to get in touch, all of the WizFX socials are good. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, thingamajig thing, and the other one, LinkedIn. Or you can get in touch via the contact form on the website and check out some of the work we've done while you're there. There's the site. There you go. How's that? Imaging, sound design, music, Miss FX.